be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Advent season, from its very nature, it calls Adventus, the coming. The coming of that Christ that last Sunday we celebrate that he is the king of the universe. That Christ, that to him and for him, all season of the church, bow their heads and really rejoice and prepare for his very coming. This season, as you know, although it is a season that leads us to Christmas, is a season that really makes us aware of where are we and where our destination is and how are we ready to prepare for the second coming of Jesus. In the first reading today, we heard the prophet Jeremiah speaking about that coming of Christ who is coming from the root of Jesse from the line of David. Jeremiah was one of those men who was experienced the terrible experience of the chosen people in the exile of God. And while the people were so down, and they know they were down because they were taken away from home, they were taken away from their culture, they cannot learn their language. They were really people with no hope. And at that very moment, when their hope was taken away from them, God sent the prophet Jeremiah to bring that hope again in them. By reminding them of the promise that God made to their father David that from his very line, from his very joys, he will bring forth that just one, that good one, who really is going to shepherd his people, and so Jerusalem, and so Judah, do not be afraid. And that hope really comes in the person of Jesus Christ, who last Sunday we celebrate that he is the king of truth, and he is the king of justice. And that's why today, with that in mind, we have nothing to fear. That gospel terrified people without hope. If you have hope in Jesus Christ, you are going to make it. There is no need for us. There is no need for us to really accept ourselves from that hope. Because that hope is not something that we believe in but it's something that is reality. That God so loved the world, that he gave us his only son, and whoever believes in him will have life and life eternal. And that is why Jesus said, said vigil and pray constantly so that you will be ready to stand in front of the Son of Man. And for those who have hope, when these tribulations come and you see him coming on the cloud of heaven with all the glory that is surrounded him, you erect yourself and raise your head. Not in shame, but in proud. Because you have prepared for that coming. That's what we come to church every Sunday for. That the Christ who died and is still dying in each one of us. It's the Christ that is alive, and we are witnessed by our life that he is alive. It's the Christ we expect him to come in glory. And that glory will be yours and mine, if like St. Paul are ready to welcome him. And that's why I go in the second reading today, and St. Paul reminds us of the beautiful, beautiful experience that he is trying to say, to the people of Thessalonica. Listen to what he said. By the way, St. Paul loved his people more than any other people that he had come by. The people of Thessalonica was the heart of his ministry. 
They loved him and he loved them too. Listen to what he said. May the Lord make you increase and bound abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your heart, to be blameless in wholeness before God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the holy ones. And for this, St. Paul said, say amen. Because that is the hope of each one of us. So you see what he said? That you are going to be strengthening your hearts, to be blameless, to be holy, and to welcome him when he comes with all his holy ones. And my dear ones, those holy ones are not strangers to you. They are your grandmother. They are your parents. They are your loved ones. Those who love Jesus. And that is what going to be our shame. When I see my mother, my grandmother there with Jesus, and I am going to be condemned because I have a choice. And I did not want Christ in my life because I choose something else. That is why the damned are going to be shameful. Be shameful because that life was supposed to be marked by virtue of baptism, to be marked with that character and seal for God, they are going to be away, away from in front of the lovers. That's why he said he will come with his holy ones. And his holy ones are your people, are those who come before us, the holy martyrs. Saint Anthony will be there watching over the people of Hamilton that he loves so much because you are his people. He will be there watching for you. That's why he said he will come with his holy ones. And that's why he said, blameless, holy. That is what God wants us to be. Then listen to him, he said, finally, we earnestly ask you and exhort you in the Lord Jesus, as you receive from us how you should conduct yourself to please God. So the way we live is not what the television say, is not what some people say, is not what the group of people say. The way we conduct ourselves is the way Jesus told them. That is the way that we need to conduct ourselves. Because there is the truth. I come from heaven not to teach you my own words, but to teach you what I have heard from the Father, so that you and me, when we are one in the message, the Father will be there in our midst. And then he continued, oh, you should conduct yourself to please God, and as you are conducting yourself, so Paul knows that the people of Thessalonica are living, are living the gospel. But listen to what he said. St. Paul looks like Father Carmen, huh? he does not say, he's not satisfied. <laughs> Listen to what he said. 